Hello guys, I am Shubham, working as a senior software engineer developer at Zimmer. So today I'll be presenting on Socket.io that explores key concepts like what is Socket.io, how data is transferred using sockets, and how data is broadcasted to multiple users. So let's get started. So I'll be going through these four things first one is overview of sockets then i'll be comparing sockets with some other protocols that we use on the front end side and later on i'll be explaining my code and the poc demo that i've created for this presentation so what is socket.io socket.io basically is a javascript library that we use to create real-time web applications so Sockets also enables real-time bi-directional communication between your web client and server. So you can consider example of WhatsApp or Facebook here. So whenever any user or a client sends a message or somebody likes your post, so we get a notification for that. So that similar sort of functionality is also provided by sockets and socket basically has two sides one is the client side and the other one is the server side so for uh, designing your client side you can use javascript java c plus plus swift dart python etc and for creating your server you can use javascript java python golang etc so as you already know our browser uses tcp for communication where a client sends a request the server authenticates that request and after successful authentication the requested data is sent back to the client and later on the client sends an acknowledgement for that so that similar thing is followed by sockets and socket also enables one-to-one -one real time bi-directional event based communication and also enables broadcasting to multiple nodes that means broadcasting a message to a single user or to multiple users <clears throat> so as you can see in the image we have a client and a server so the client sends a connection request and the server authenticates that request and after successful authentication a connection is opened from here and now both client and server can communicate with each other bi-directionally and later on if the client or the server wants to close this connection they both can do that now we now we have web sockets so as you can see in the image we have a client and a server the, ser the client sends a connection request let me know if you get any messages and after successful authentication the uh, the connection is opened and then the whenever any data is available here that is automatically pushed back to the client so there is no need of firing any sort of apis here so this is how web sockets work now i'll be comparing web sockets with some other protocols so the first one is http so as you can see in the image here we have a client and a server so we have fired these three apis so there is no need of firing all such apis in sockets we just have to uh, create a connection and after successfully creating a connection whenever any data is available that will be automatically pushed in this last step so there is no need of firing apis like this in sockets now we have socket versus polling so here uh, let's consider example of notifications so to update notifications we let's say we fire an api in every 0.5 seconds so for example if the backend server takes 10 to 15 seconds to update the backend data then there is no meaning in firing the api in every 0.5 seconds because most of the time we will get same data so this is one of the drawbacks that we have in polling so as you can see in the image we have a client and a server the client sends a http request and the response is sent back to the client so we keep on firing this api again and again so this is how polling works now we have socket versus long polling so in long polling 
a client sends a request and the server keeps this request active until new set of data is available so here the problem that we were facing in normal polling is completely resolved because the server keeps the request active until new set of data is available instead of sending whatever data is available back to the client so whenever any new set of data is available that is sent back to the client as a response and then once the client receives this response client again sends a request for new set of data so so the polling uh, issue is completely resolved here with the help of long polling now we have socket versus server sent events so as you can see in the image we have a client and a server so the client sends a connection request and now it's the responsibility of server to keep this request active until data is available so you can consider example of youtube here so on youtube whenever we play a video we fire an api and then the video keeps on getting buffered so we don't have to fire any api for that similarly here also the client sends a connection request and that request is kept alive until data is available and that data is sent back to the client in form of events and once the data is completed the server initiates a close connection request even in between if the client wants to close this connection client can also initiate a close connection request so now i'll be explaining my code these are some of the prerequisites that we have to follow while using socket.io so we have to install node.js and nodemon i'm using angular on the front end side so we need angular cli for that I'm using express socket.io and socket.io client. So what is express? So express is a Node.js web application framework that we use to create real time single page, multi page or hybrid web applications and express also helps us to manage multiple servers as well as routes that we use on the front end side. And now what is nodemon? So you have already you must have already used vs code so whenever we save our code in vs code the front end code is automatically recompiled using hot module reloading so that similar functionality is provided by nodemon for our backend files so whenever any change is detected detected in backend files nodemon reinitiates a backend build so now socket.io is used on the server side and socket.io client is used on the client side so now i'll be explaining my code so this is my backend folder and this is my frontend folder so inside my backend i have node modules src and package json i've already installed express nodemon and socket.io and with within src i have index.js so this is my main backend file so i have imported express then i have imported http so http gives me a method create server and within create server i have passed my express server and then this is the port 3000 so i am using this 3000 port to send and receive data and i have also imported course because now 3000 will be considered as a different domain so browser is not going to allow anybody to access data using this port so to handle any sort of course error we have to import course like this and i have imported socket.io along with this http server and i have passed some additional parameters like this so i have written origin star that means anybody who wants to access data from this port can access so for that for giving that access we have to write origin star like this so i have written io.on that means the connection opens here and socket.on means this is an event handler for this event join so as this is an event handler for join so we will be emitting this event from our 
front end side and we will handle that on our back end side so as you can see here emit so this emit means we are emitting this event along with this data so let's go to our front end code first let me show you the output so this is the output of my front end code so this is a toggle button which does this show and hide this is the input field for entering username this is the input field for selecting a group and this is the join button and this is the input field so whatever a user types we can send that within this group z3 using send button so this is the component for my socket file so this is the toggle button that i just showed you this is the input field for my username this is the input field for my rooms and this is the join button and this is the leave button so as soon as a user clicks on join we fire a method join so this method is going to emit this event join along with this data so as soon as a user clicks on join shubham joined z3 now shubham and z3 is part of this whole tab so as soon as user clicks on join this event is emitted along with this data so this data consists of username the room he he or she selected and an id for that user so i have emitted this event join i'll handle that event on my backend side like here i've handled that event here socket dot join and data so i did socket dot join that means join this room that is z3 to to my socket so i have done socket dot broadcast to that means broadcast to z3 room and emit this event along with this data so i have emitted this new user joined event so i'll handle this event on my front end side so for that i have fired a method new user joined so this new user joined is going to handle this event which is emitted from my back end file so whatever data is emitted from the back end is sent to this observable and we have subscribed to that observable here and whatever data the user sends is pushed to this array and we have looped through this array to display the message that the user types like if shubham says hi so that message is pushed to this room z3 now let's say we have another user nd she also joins z3 so as soon as andy joins z3 uh, shubham will receive a message saying andy has joined z3 so now if shubham says hi shubham will receive hi as well as andy will also receive hi from shubham because both andy and shubham are part of z3 group and let's say if john joins z4 so both of them will not receive any message from john because john joined z4 so this is how data is transferred to single users as well as if let's say john joins same group z3 then both of them will receive message from john that john has joined so now if shubham says hi both andy and john will receive hi from shubham so this is how data is transferred to multiple users now i have also created another component charts so as you can see here my chart is getting updated in every 2 seconds so for that as soon as my backend uh, connection is created i have fired this method send data and this send data method is emitting an event chart data array and this event also takes these parameters so the this this object consist of an array of eight numbers and i am passing this data along with this event and i am firing this method in every 2 seconds so i have to handle this event on my chart component so for that i've done that using this method 
as soon as my ng on init is fired i have fired this chart data method so this chart data method is going to handle this event which i fired which i emitted from my backend file so i whatever data comes along with this event i am passing that to this observable and i am subscribing to that observable here so whatever data is received here is passed to this update chart data method and this update chart data method is going to update my chart in every two seconds so this is how i am updating my chart in every two seconds so yeah that's all from my end i appreciate you taking your time to listen to my presentation stay tuned as we will be bringing to you more such videos exploring new concepts and trends in software development space thank you once again